Good everybody, welcome to Getting Real Estate in Vegas. I'm Bridget Magnus and this is the Vegas Video Network. Well, for those of you who haven't watched our show before, we do talk about um, real estate with a Las Vegas twist. So go ahead and get those questions, problems, or suggestions out on email to gettingreal at vegasvideonetwork.com. Maybe you prefer the telephone, so pick that up and dial 866-966-4599. Or don't forget, we do also have the live chat going on right now for those of you who are watching on Friday afternoon here at the Vegas Video Network. Of course, if you're not watching on the Vegas Video Network, we'd like to thank you for downloading the show on iTunes, looking it up on YouTube, watching it on Roku, or actually listening to it on the radio. That's KSHP 1400 AM on Friday evenings. So let's get things started. Who's ready for Friday Figures? Yeah, you know, someday I ought to write a little, you know, jingly thing for that, but well, not today. Uh, let's see. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start off with the number of available units, which has dropped down below 10,000 to 99.58. That is the lowest number that I have seen since I started doing the figures. The previous low was in May of 2010. Yow! Um, of, uh, let me see, the median price on single-family homes has risen, I repeat, risen to $145,000. Median price on condos unchanged at fifty-five. dollars Median price on townhomes unchanged at 80000 Now, of our total available units, we only have 1,778 foreclosed properties. Yes, that is an abnormally low number considering the foreclosure crisis. It has mostly to do with some quirks of state law rather than fewer people being delinquent. The median price on those foreclosed homes has risen. Yes, I also said risen to 110000 That is a full 10% off of the lows that we set last summer. Now I've got another little surprise of the 4,395 short sales that we've got available. Median price on those rose too to $114,000. Um, it had been noodling around at 110 for a long time, so I'm going to go ahead and monitor that for a while and see what's going to happen going forward. Non-distressed properties, we do have 3,785 of them. Median price on those also rose to $190,000. That's right, I said 190, not 119. It's a happy number, and I'm glad to be able to share it with you. We did sell 3,554 properties in the last 30 days. The median sales price was 105,000, and the median list price was 110,000. So the gap is widening a little bit, but not enough to be terribly concerned about here. Remember, we've still got low inventory. So in, in that particular scenario, I don't think lowball is still a good idea, but you can at least try it to see if you can get a counteroffer. 13,269 properties under contract. We've got um, 5,645 rentals and 2,603 new leases. Um, rents are a little bit soft. I think that has to do with the number of condominiums that have sold recently. Investors buying those, moving people into them. Needless to say, they have lower rents than a single family home. So on to the news. Oh, there's been a lot of news. And you know what? I'm happy because I've got almost all good news today. You want good news? How about the crime rate in Vegas is down? I think that's great news. Uh, more good news is that some banks, I repeat some, are offering some big incentives for people to do cash sales. Um, the article that I read this morning suggests that numbers can go as high as $35,000. Now, needless to say, your mileage may vary. Do not count on cashing a $35,000 check from your mortgage holder, but it is worth looking into. Interest rates are still at an astonishingly low 3.87%. Wow. And now for the, I'm not so sure it's good news, the, for, uh, the foreclosure fraud settlement or whitewash, depending how you'd like to look at it. All right, so let's talk more about that foreclosure fraud settlement. See, I put those in order for a reason. So then, who is involved in this darn thing? Well, 49 states are involved in it, but not Oklahoma. See, I just kind of love that pun if it's no okay. Okay, um, speaking of which, uh, we do have $26 billion in this settlement. 
That's a very large number. Nevada stands to get 1.47 billion of that. Just for comparison, I'd like to point out that December's trade deficit, that the amount of money that Americans effectively shipped overseas for cheap goods from China was 49 billion in the month of December alone. So let that put the, this particular settlement into perspective for you, that it's a little over half of what Americans ship overseas every month in the way of money. My next point is that this does cover the five largest servicers, which account for about half of all mortgages. Those are Bank of America, J.P. Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, Citigroup, and Ally, which is formerly known as GMAC. Now, I love this quote from the uh, HUD secretary. His name is Sean Donovan. He said, and I quote, banks must follow the laws. That's a new one. Um, he went on to say, any bank that has not done so should be held accountable and should take prompt action to correct its mistakes. You know, if you kill somebody, you can't correct that mistake. Um, just saying. Uh, moving on, that uh, settlement does include $20 billion to consumers. Over $10 billion is going to go towards principal reduction for delinquent homeowners. Over $3 billion is going to go towards uh, refinancing for underwater homeowners. I, I think you could probably use that up in Vegas personally, but what do I know? Um, and up to $7 billion for other programs, including but not limited to principal forbearance for the unemployed, anti-blight programs, hello, we could use some of those in Vegas, um, short sales and um, the HAP program, that, that's a military short sale program for those of you who didn't catch our great episode on it. Um, also, we've got $5 billion going to state and the federal government. That does include $1.5 billion to go to certain foreclosed homeowners who meet certain criteria, including when they were foreclosed upon. Um, somebody did the math, and it works out to about $2,000 per homeowner. Woo, we kicked you out of your home. We put all of your stuff on the street. Uh, here's a check for two grand a couple years later. Bon appetit. Um, $3.5 billion is going to go to the states and the feds to repay lost public funds for things like um, cleanup of, of uh, code enforcement, things of that nature. And $1 billion is to resolve just Bank of America and countrywide fraud in FHA loans. Now that is going to hurt, but don't cry for them. They have plenty more where that billion came from. Now then, the next thing is that they are going to require a higher servicing standards. Now why did I put that in quotes? Because the higher standards are what they always should have been. For example, no robo-signing, that's bad. Shouldn't that have always been the rule? Yes, it should have. Um, you have to present accurate information in court. You know, if I lied in court, they'd put me in jail, but not the banks. Oh well, N no, no, don't do that anymore. Um, better oversight but mostly from within, so the same people that were the fox watching the hen house before are still foxes watching hen houses. Let's see how that works out. Um, they are going to evaluate for loss mitigation before pursuing foreclosure. Um, keep in mind that the, since the servicer is not really the one who's going to lose the money, the, uh, the mortgage owner is going to be the one losing the money. They often do not have the best of motivation to engage in this loss mitigation strategy on the part for, for someone else. Um, they're also going to refrain from foreclosing while someone is in the process of getting a loan modification. It's kind of a sneaky thing. They, they used to tell people, well, you know, if you want us to consider your loan modification, you have to stop paying. Well, you stop paying, and then the foreclosure action starts, and, and, you, and you basically got a, a two-car race. Who's going to finish first, the loan modification or the foreclosure? Could go either way. Partly depends what state you're in. In Nevada, I'm going to bet on the train. I, I mean the bank uh, foreclosing. Um, also, they're going to try for better timelines for getting short sales and loan modifications done. And there will be enhanced protection for um, our men and women in uniform that goes beyond what is in the Service Members Civil Relief Act. Um, remember this, guys. If you're in the military and you're looking down a foreclosure, please, please talk to your CO, talk to your JAG on base about what can be done because the banks have limited rights where you are concerned. Okay, 
One important point that I'd like to make is that this does not, and I repeat, not prevent criminal lawsuits. He's, if it is found that there were actual crimes committed, these could still end up in courts. There's still the Delaware investigation of MERS, the Mortgage Electronic Records System. There is still the Residential Mortgage Backed Securities Working Group, which um, uh, the uh, New York AG is in charge of for the feds. The feds can still recover the money that they have lost because of foreclosures for uh, both HUD, um, that would be the FHA loans that go bad, go to HUD, uh, Fannie Mae, and Freddie Mac. Um, the Nevada suit for uh, uh, LPS, Lender Processing Services, is still in play. Um, there are other state suits that I haven't mentioned, and homeowners can still sue. That's right, assuming that you have enough documentation, if you were foreclosed on and you honestly think you can prove that the bank did it illegally, you can still file a lawsuit. Go for it. Um, but what about civil lawsuits? Oh, those pesky little civil lawsuits. <laughs> well, silence. Not a word in the press release for the Department of Justice. Not a word in any of the news reporting about the settlement. What does that mean? Well, it means that pension funds are probably going to get the shaft on the mortgage-backed securities they own. Retirement accounts, likewise, will get the shaft. I still think that Fannie, Freddie, and HUD are still going to end up uh, uh, getting the short end of the stick. And guess who their losses get passed on to? Yes, that would be you and I, Mr. and Mrs. Paxpayer. Um, local governments with gutted tax bases due to banks dumping properties at below um, any reasonable uh, question of how they would be built. You know, Clark County is going to have a reduced tax base for a decade because of the foreclosure fraud mess, and it's not all their fault. But guess what? It, uh, Bank of America isn't going to rebuild the road when it has potholes in it. Um, so taxpayers are going to be left holding the bag. And worst of all, the banks are not even really going to feel that $25 billion because they make so darn much money hand over fist every quarter. All right, so that does end what I've got to say about foreclosure fraud. Let's move on to something a lot more fun. What were they thinking? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> All right, now we've done what was the homeowner thinking. We've done what was the realtor thinking. Today we've got what was the builder thinking. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a water heater in a master bedroom closet. You know, I'm not an expert on water heaters, but I don't really think you'll want one next to your coats and dresses and pants and shirts. I'm picky that way. All right, we're going to take a little break and be right back. Don't go any place. Traditional media believes that after about three minutes, you'll tune out. Most Vegas media companies think if it doesn't jiggle, you won't tune in. At the Vegas Video Network, we think both are wrong. The Vegas Video Network is the first and only live online broadcast network that specializes in insider news and expert views about Vegas. We combine great storytelling with the ability to watch when and where you want on your computer, mobile device, or television. Discover the real Las Vegas. Visit VegasVideoNetwork.com. All right, let's have some real advice. Today we are going to be talking about some maintenance tasks around your home, some of which you might remember and some of which might let slide. Let's get started with a few things that you're going to want to do every three months or thereabouts. The first one is change that HVAC filter. That darn thing collects dust like you wouldn't believe. We have plenty of dust in Las Vegas. Keeping that thing in clean condition is going to reduce your power bills and mean cleaner air in your house. I call that a win-win situation. Another thing, and one that you know is kind of a pain in the butt, so I know that it's you know one of the first things to go away when we decide we don't have enough time. Flip the mattress on your beds. Uh, I am talking about uh, the uh, the spring mattresses. Obviously, there are, you, know, you don't flip a water bed. Um, there are some kinds of beds that are not designed to be flipped. And if you have any question, you should go ahead and consult the manufacturer's website of your bed. These days, everybody's got a website, so no excuses. 
The other thing you're going to want to do every three months or so is change that old box of baking soda in the back of the refrigerator. You know the one, the one that you've forgotten about since, oh, school started? Okay, now let's move on to some things you're going to want to do every six months or so. Um, the first one is another important thing in Vegas. Go ahead and change your water filters. Um, we have very hard water here in Vegas, which means that a lot of us do have water softeners. Either way, you're going to want to filter out the dissolved gangster or whatever it is that's in our water here. Go for it. Yes, I said dissolved gangster because I'm funny like that. Okay, the next thing you're going to want to do is change out the, alarm, uh, the batteries in your smoke alarm. It's very important. You do want that thing going off in the middle of the night if your house is on fire. Trust me on this one. Another thing that you're going to want to go off if it has to is that carbon monoxide detector. So change the batteries in the carbon monoxide detector at the same time. No, I, you, nobody here has a Colorado alarm. That is carbon monoxide. Um, there are also a few things that you're going to want to do every year or so. Now, you know, you don't have to, like, put it on your calendar and be sure that you do it February 10th of every single year. But, you know, remember to do it once a year. The first one is go ahead, move the fridge out, and clean the coils. Dust them off, vacuum them off with the attachment, whatever you got to do to get them clean. Again, this is going to make your fridge more efficient, help it last longer, help it use less electricity. Also a win-win situation, so you want to get that done. Also, every year, you're going to want to drain the water heater. Again, you know, all of the, the uh, impurities, the dissolved solids are going to sink to the bottom of your water heater over time. It, it, over time, it can actually reduce the capacity of your water heater. It will make your water heater less efficient and more prone to springing a leak. So you really do want to go ahead and drain that thing once a year, when, you know, Pick a month, really. Uh, just do it. Um, the other, another thing you're going to do every year or so, and I realize this doesn't sound like home maintenance, but go ahead and clean out your pantry. Get rid of food you're never going to eat. Get rid of that can of soup that says it was best by September of 2009. All of those things you, you can do. It's easy. Stuff that's you know not beyond its expiration date, go ahead and take it to a food bank. You'll be doing your closet good. You'll be doing yourself good. And the last thing is only for those of you who have pool filters, clean that pool filter cartridge once a year. Take them out of the little uh, thing in the, in the back, the little tank thing, hose them down real good, put them back inside. You'll be amazed how much crud there can be on one of those filter cartridges. Again, creating a more efficient environment where things work better and save you money. All right. I thank you all for tuning in today. It is a beautiful Friday. It is the beginning of spring, even though it sure as heck doesn't feel like it. Uh, go ahead and join us next week. But in the meantime, if you've got a question, problem, or suggestion, you can go ahead and email those to gettingreal at vegasvideonetwork.com. You can phone it in to 866-966-4599, which is our toll-free listener hotline. If you have a personal real estate question that I can help you with, you'll find my contact information on BridgetMagnus.com, along with the complete version of the Friday figures. All right, you have yourself a terrific weekend. Drive safe, and I will see you next week.